Welcome back. In the comments on my last video, someone was saying they had trouble with the Otters, and I understood, because the Otters can be kind of a complex faction to master, so the next time I got an Otter game, I decided to record it, and here it is here. You won't see it on screen, but I'm last in turn order, and this is kind of advantageous for me because I can set all of my prices to one and encourage everyone to buy, because even if I only get one or two meeples, they go on top of the three that are already in my payments box, and at this point they're just extra gravy, so I want people to buy. The game starts off with the lizards buying a bird card from me, building some gardens and mouse, and accomplishing some fairly timely mouse crafting, which puts them up to a respectable three points. The Eerie starts off with the very unpopular Builder Leader, which I thought would be good for me because I'm not going to get attacked, but they put a card into the battle decree immediately, and now I don't know what to think. I expect the birds to either come south into lizard territory or stay north and run across the top because they can keep it to themselves, and they end up going south. The cats go for a classic build overwork build option, choosing to buy a card from me to use to overwork. They must really like the cards in their hand though, because otherwise they wouldn't have bought a card from me in order to do it. They would have just put a sawmill down wherever their card suit was. In possible preparation for the Eerie, they put their first recruiter way up north, which isn't a bad idea, but in their position I probably would have wanted it to be on the southern choke point first, which means that I probably would have wanted that workshop in the central fox clearing instead of the southern one. It's my turn, and putting prices at one has gotten me two extra funds to work with for cards that I didn't especially care about. Normally on the first few turns I like to go for dividends because it's easy points, it's generally safe because people won't punish you for it, and it helps you close the gap between your trading posts and the rest of the points you need to gain over the course of a game. Since I only have three funds, I'm only going to get one dividend end point for this turn, so I decide instead I'm just going to fill up my hand with cards using those and worry about the single extra point later. I chose this clearing to set up in because it's one of the least important clearings on this board, and it's next to the cats who aren't going to attack me very early. With the tea and bird ambush in my hand, I set my prices to 3 because I figure that's what people will buy it for, and I let everyone know that they're in my hand in chat because otherwise people would probably overlook them. I personally dislike using favor cards in my games, but I figure that the cats might want to buy it anyways to keep someone else from using it, so I advertise that too. We see the lizards undertake a strategy that is endemic to the digital format, which is to stack up on bird cards and do as many acolytes as they physically can to be very aggressive and interfere with the board very directly. It's not terribly effective because you suffer more to lose gardens than you can dish out, but the sheer uniqueness of it makes it one of my favorite parts of playing on digital. Birds buy my ambush and finally start putting down roosts, and cats decide to fortify their position by moving, recruiting, and overworking. Now that I have 6 funds, it's a great time to start doing dividends, so I just end my turn like that and wait it out. I still have my favorite card, and I don't want lizards to get another 2 points for free off of T, so I leave my prices at 3. You gotta love aggressive lizards. This pretty much guarantees that the cats aren't going to punish me for going for dividends this turn, too. This is probably as good a time as any to mention it, but a lot of people tend to rag on dividends, and I think it has its place. Sure, it opens you up to one of the worst ways that otters can be punished in the entire game, but if you do it very early in the game, then the odds that someone is actually going to attack you for it are pretty low, especially since you're going to have five warriors to everyone else's three. Not only does it help you close the other 12 points you need in a given game, but it also helps keep you off people's radar. The biggest risk with going for dividends, though, is the risk that you're not drawing all the crafting before everyone else can get to it, and in this game I get lucky, and the builder and lizards don't manage to draw enough crafting to actually steal it from me.
On this turn, the cats have actually left me in a rather weird position. Because they bought from me, I don't have any of my own funds with which to put down a trade post, and my plan up to this point had been to go up north, put down a trade post with my own funds, craft the tea, and possibly go blow up that fox clearing as it's underdefended right now. Not only do I want to avoid spending foreign funds this early into the game, but if I spent the funds to place a trade post in the mouse clearing the cats do rule on this turn, then my warrior would be forever isolated in the top row. Instead, because I have an even number of funds, I decide to go for another dividend turn, increasing the cost of my mercenaries to avoid anyone using it to screw me over this turn. On their turn, the lizards double down on their earlier aggression by not only attempting to take out the double clearing that I was looking at earlier, but also taking out the mouse roost for the Eerie. They had actually set a mouse card into their recruit decree, so this is going to force them to turmoil here. Pretty good play all around, even though they don't successfully remove all those cat buildings. With the momentum they already have, and a handful of cards, the Lizards are actually kind of becoming a threat right now, and in their last turn they set up two nearly undefended gardens, which is pretty easy prey for me. I'm a little worried about having to deal with sappers though, because that's going to remove more of my warriors than I'd like, but I don't think it'll be too punishing in the long run. They do craft the other T out from under me though. Pretty good RNG on their part, but it's unfortunate that I don't get those points myself. The Eerie goes into their turmoil, and with the board state as it is, Charismatic's a great choice. I think it'll be one of the only ways that they end up breaking out of their current trap. But it'll be very dangerous for me when and if I go over there. All this very interesting lizard aggression has triggered its inevitable drawback, where the cats are very angry about losing all of their material and they want the lizards removed. Not unwisely so. The one catch is that they're not paying attention to the fact that I'm about to start my turn with 9 VP. Bad for the lizards, bad for the cats, great for me. I give the cats some vaguely suggestive words of encouragement that imply that I'm going to go solve their problems for them. It's also important to note that with Lizards being as aggressive as they have been in this game, I need to pay close attention to the Outcast suit. If I end my turn with all my warriors inside of an Outcast clearing, it's very likely the Lizards are going to convert all of them. And as a faction that really relies on having warriors on the board in the early game, I can't afford that. The cats take their shot at the Lizard Garden and get ambushed for their trouble, which is also great for me because now that's not going to happen to me. I still have to worry about sappers, but losing one warrior is way better than losing two. My dividend points have brought me up to the table leader, now it's time to surpass him by taking out his gardens. You'll notice throughout this game that I stay very close to the river as much as I can, because the ability to move without rule is super important for a faction that really can struggle at times to achieve rule. You'll also notice that whenever I'm committing funds to act, I generally commit foreign funds first and try to keep pairs of like funds together in case I decide to put in a trade post midway through my turn. I take out the two lizard gardens and decide to spend the two bird funds now so that I can build up my forces again. I don't want to sit on this trade post though because it may make me an appealing target for the Eerie and I really can't afford that right now, so I move to the next clearing nearby. I'm starting to reach a point where I've put off crafting for too long, so I'm going to draw additional cards before ending my turn. This is where the aggressive lizard strategy falls apart. If you start to lose gardens, then you lose your hand cards, which you need for actions and scoring, and because you've been aggressively placing gardens without getting warriors on top of them, you end up without enough acolytes to really bounce back. After losing their gardens and crafting a card last turn, the lizards only have two cards in their hand right now, and because they had no warriors, they only have four acolytes. They choose to keep up their scoring by converting a cat and taking out my trade post. No problem for me, because the birds still have someone else to attack, but it does make their gardens look a little more appealing by having four warriors instead of five. I think were I in their position, it might have been wiser to convert two of the birds, battle my trade post there, and then crusade towards their own gardens in order to stock up more defenders.
Once bitten, the birds are now twice shy of suited recruiting, and they put together a nice stable decree which they're going to use to re-establish all the roosts they had before. Cats, however, are loving the added space they've gained from me moving out and lizards and birds fighting each other. They buy a bird card for me to take advantage of it, but with lizards and birds suitably humbled, I'm looking at that cat core board to see if I can't make good on those efforts the lizards tried earlier. Hopefully, because I'm in the cat's good graces right now, they're not going to defend that cardboard extra heavily. Cats actually take a fairly unambitious turn right here. Because they haven't spent their wood, there's a ton of points just sitting in that fox clearing. And because they fought the lizards a couple of times, it's now easier than ever for me to rule and pass through those bottom two clearings. Which is exactly what I intend to do, because I need to build up my forces a little more before I go to take on that fox clearing. Being careful to commit the funds that I'm not going to need for trade posts, I move through the bottom clearings re-establishing my otter ball while making the occasional rollback to make sure that I'm handling rule correctly for my trade posts. If it wasn't for the four points of cardboard and the opportunity to take down another point competitor, I probably would have spent this turn just drawing cards and trying to craft everything I found. It's normally pretty risky to get into this many battles as the otters, especially if you're in a position of policing from the rear. In my case, however, I'm just taking the seven non-trade post VP that I gained from dividends and just extending that as far as I can manage to get it by fighting all this cardboard. Usually you want to gain as much VP as you can without spending funds, but the table's already given me a fair number of funds already, and I know that most of the mouse crafting is gone thanks to the lizards, and I'll need two fox trade posts to craft the remaining items, and I'm one away from having two rabbit posts. So I'd end up having to spend these funds sooner or later anyways, assuming I get good draws. I complete my backstab of the cats, and I set all my prices to 4 just in case anyone wants to use my own services against me now that I'm close to the end of the game. Now that I'm a clear threat at the table, it's doubly important that I keep myself out of the outcast clearings. As you can see, the lizards end up going for the cats again because they have few targets worth molesting and I don't want to be one of them. At this point in the game, I recognize that I am in a position to craft that fox favor, which would get me more than enough points to make victory inevitable while stomping on the poor cats even harder. I don't really want to use the favor card and leave the cats in a position where they have to play a useless turn before the end of the game, so I'll really only craft it if it's going to guarantee me the win on that turn. As such, I warn the cats that if they take out any of my fox trade posts, then it's going to be inevitable that I put down a replacement and craft the favor card to set myself up. This is both encouragement to maybe get the cats to buy at 4, and also a friendly reminder that they shouldn't go attacking trade posts without considering it. Now that I'm at 20 points, I start looking at how I'm actually going to close out this game. I only have four funds that I can spend as trade posts, so right now I'm not really in a position to do it. What I do have, however, is a fair number of trade posts that are already on the board, so I'm in a good position to go and start drawing a bunch of cards in order to try and craft everything that's left in the deck. Targeting crafting like this is something that I generally reserve for after dividends because it can be a little less consistent and frequently I end up drawing cards at the very end of my turn that I can actually craft rather than when I have the funds to craft them. Because the birds end up fighting the lizards in order to sustain their decree, I'm in a position now to collect two undefended pieces of cardboard on the far side of the map, which is pretty handy. Here I check the discard pile to see where all the crafting is, and according to my suspicions, all of the crafted items are hiding in the discard pile, which astoundingly has not rolled over yet. I am still the current point leader by a wide margin though, and the Marquise decides to attack me here, which is the right choice. It would have probably been more successful for them to have attacked me earlier, but it does mean that I now have to be very careful about how I use my warriors. Now that I only have two warriors though, it'll be a lot more difficult for me to actually place trade posts to craft whatever I draw, so I decide I'm going to go for the cardboard, which I can do because I can move along the river without worrying about rule. Here, I send one warrior to each location in advance, because if I had attacked the birds right away and they had ambushed me, then I would lose both my warriors and wouldn't be able to follow up on the lizards. 
The birds do end up ambushing me, but now I only lose one warrior, and my main competitor the lizards are put even further behind. While it would have been more efficient to draw a bunch of craftable items and craft them on this turn, I ended up going for combat mostly because I didn't think that I would be able to draw enough cards to roll over the discard pile. Because I have quite a few cards to discard here anyway, I take a look at the lizards and see that they have several acolytes still. The lizards want to re-establish themselves on the board, and all of my enemies currently have valuable things sitting in fox clearings, so I decide to discard several fox cards so that they can do my job for me. This works out pretty well in my favor, because the lizards take out some more cat buildings and set themselves up with very few defenders, but end up having a armorer's card to stand behind. If the cats decide to go and fight the lizards here, then they might end up wasting their time on armors, and I can clean up later. Finally, the discard pile has rolled over, and every card I draw now has a much better chance of being something I can craft. I'm double and triple checking the lizards here because I couldn't quite remember how they got to only two cards in their hand by losing one card. Nothing too strategic here, I'm just forgetful. In their continuing pursuit of cardboard, the birds go after the lizards again, which burns off the armorer's card from earlier. Sadly, this means the cats are probably going to take out that fox clearing before I get the chance to. The birds also try to kill my lone warrior here, and because he was already stuck behind enemy lines, I would have had to recruit anyways to get him out of there. They roll a 0-0, zero, zero, so he ends up staying in place, but it wouldn't really have mattered in either case. If anything, the worst outcome from this is that it allowed them to fulfill their mouse battle without having to fight that heavily defended cat clearing up top. As predicted, the cats end up taking out that tasty lizard cardboard. Some bad rolls ends up meaning that it takes them their whole turn to do it, however. Now it's finally time for me to go ham on crafting, and surprising no one, I immediately draw three completely useless cards. I take a moment here to consider whether or not I should start going for trade posts now that I'm down to my last six funds, but I realize that nobody's in a position to win on their next turn, so I may as well just keep drawing cards and just win next turn. With only four funds left, even if I drew something craftable right now, I wouldn't have the funds to put down a trade post to craft it. Naturally, as the price for my hedonistic lifestyle, this is exactly when I draw the coins, which is what I would have wanted to be crafting. Only now, at the very end of my turn, do I draw three cards that are actually worth having, but nobody's going to buy from me at this point in the game anyway. My hope is that I can spend those cat funds to put down the rabbit trading post I'll need for the coins next turn, and then find one more point of cardboard elsewhere. I don't really expect the lizards to go for the rabbit clearing the cats currently hold, so I'm not terribly worried about the outcast, and I just choose to discard all of the garbage that I'm holding onto. While I didn't plan for it whatsoever, a hated fox outcast gives the lizards the opportunity to attack my trade post after sanctifying a building, which gives me the opportunity to ambush them for an extra point. Now I just need my trading post and the coins to win the game. The birds have finally set up a nice, stable decree that's accomplishing a lot, but sadly it's too little too late.
On their turn, the very worst thing the cats could do to me right now is to move out of that rabbit clearing in order to stop me from using their funds to craft the coins. And of course, that's exactly what happened. I'm tempted to think that they read my hand and saw that I had a win condition there, but it ends up being that they actually wanted to go for fox dominance, which is a pretty tenacious answer to the difficult position they were put in. The downside for them is that I have enough funds at this point to recruit twice in that rabbit clearing and put down a trade post myself. And that, my friends, is an otter victory. Using your funds in the early game to squeeze as many points as you can without spending them and gradually making your way into the end game such that you can place trade posts to close it out. Thank you all very much for watching, and if you want a primer on how dangerous the Harrier is, check out this video, it's coming up next.